Seriously, who's blowing up my phone? Oh, yeah. Powerball. Big news. Powerball now draws three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Play now. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. Spring it on with 40 to 70% off almost everything at Gap Factory and GapFactory.com. Matching styles for the family are on sale, too. Shop it all through April 12th. This is Donald Parham of the L.A. Chargers, and you're listening to Chargers Unleashed, part of the L.A. Football Network. Stay jiggy. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the L.A. Football Network. Today's show, of course, is being brought to you by UFC Fit and Temecula, Charger, Bolt Family, My Bookie, and Golden Road Brewery. Dan, as we said earlier on this week, vacation's over. Put your big boy pants on. Oh, it's time boy. to go to work because the Chargers are 4-2 and two and the New England Patriots are coming to town. Chargers are going up against the Patriots and talk about revenge season. SZN Patriots just whooped us last year, Jake. Yeah. And fun fact, Justin Herbert has not lost the same team twice ever in his career. And well, so he has is... only played two seasons. So I, I get your point, Dan. But I'm saying he's like AFC West division, other teams potentially. I'm just saying if he loses to the Patriots, that would be the first team he's lost to twice. Dan Wolfenstein already kicking off the show with any good piece of information that he can get his hands on. You heard it here first, folks. But guys and gals, thank you so much for tuning in. For folks who have not joined us previously, welcome, as Jake mentioned. You can find us and like us and subscribe on YouTube as well as anywhere you get your podcasts. Today, we got all kinds of stuff, a jam-packed show for you today. We're going to go through Charges offense versus the Patriots defense. Flip it, do the alternate. We'll also get into a voicemail reaction that we got. Jake, can't wait for you to listen to this one. We got to talk about some special events coming up for LAF being in Chargers Unleashed that we can't wait to break to you. But, Jake, coming off a of bye week, Chargers are getting healthy. We signed a few folks onto the team, especially for special teams. Andre Roberts. We've got a new kicker. Some things How are you feeling? How are you feeling about, just generally speaking, the team going into this game? Are you feeling confident? Did the Ravens game kind of mess with your psyche a bit? Like, where is your pessimistic to optimism level right now? Oh, okay. If, 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 you, give, if, you, give, if you went, like, letter grades instead of percentage, I would say it's, it's an incomplete. Because, it, truth be told, I don't, I don't know how to feel. Do I think that Brandon Staley is going to have this team ready to play? come Sunday. Yes, I do. How well he's going to play, and if the adjustments have been made that we have seen from this team that has been their downfall in certain situations, we'll see if that ends up coming to fruition. You're getting certain players back. Brandon Staley has emphasized it all throughout this week when people have asked him, how are you going to fix the run defense? He has talked not too specifically, but has said that they've gone to the tape, they've looked at certain adjustments that they can make, and hopefully they're going to implement those come Sunday. Offensively, hopefully you're going to get back to a more of a a balanced attack, and, and as they said, be more aggressive on first and second down, so you are not just putting yourself in these third and long situations with Justin Herbert and just having these Opposing defense is being able to pin their ears back and just tee off on you whenever they want. So you have to give your offense more opportunities to open up the playbook on short yardage situations. So, Dan, you know, again, short answers to your questions. If this was an Anthony Lynn led team, I'd probably be able to give you a more definitive answer because we've seen Anthony Lynn off of a bye and what he's been able to produce after that. Brandon Staley, we have not. Uh, And going up against a team that, yes, trounced you, to keep it mildly, last year (laughs) gave you one of the worst losses in in franchise history. And whatever you want to say about him for the fact that he doesn't have Tom Brady anymore, Bill Belichick is still Bill Belichick and knows how to scheme against youthful quarterbacks. And again, he embarrassed Justin Herbert last year, 45-0, to There's a lot of things defensively that he's going to do, and he definitely implemented them last year. 
I wouldn't expect it to be any different come Sunday. So Bill Belichick is going to come in with a game plan offensively and defensively that the Chargers have to be ready to uh, just uh, they have to be ready for it. So this is going to be fun because obviously this is a home game. I will be there. Lots of familiar faces. Adrian Phillips get to go up against, get to go up against Hunter Henry, which I also find kind of fascinating. When Hunter Henry is on the Chargers, like we're not going to give anybody flack. We're not going to give any misconceptions. Like he was a very good player, but I would never say that he was like, you know, one of the best route running tight ends in the NFL. Like I would never say that he was like this bona fide playmaker. Like you're hearing out of new England that I'm talking about Hunter Henry. And I don't know if that's just because how spoiled we are with the playmakers we do have, where he kind of slides down that depth chart of playmakers or how little new England has on offense where he's that much of a playmaker. It's interesting to hear how much hype he gets in new England versus what he got here. People liked him here. But I don't think he was seen as highly as he is in New England right now. You know, I don't know about that. I know from a fantasy standpoint, because I had, past tense, Jonu Smith. And I know Hunter Henry has started to finally get rhythm into this offense. I think that's Mm -hmm. where a lot of it's coming from. I know a lot of people were excited about him coming on board in New England in the preseason. Uh, And say what you will, but... Mac Jones, for a rookie, is turning out you know to, to look like, as of now, the best rookie quarterback out of that class and is getting better on a weekly basis. So say what you will about New England. Yes, they don't have Tom Brady anymore, but they have the offensive weapons, more so the offensive system, to beat this Chargers team. And the thing that scares me, one of the things that he scares me most, Dan, if we're just going to dive right into it and talk about this New England uh, offense versus our defense, it's their run game. We already have gone into nauseam for the last several weeks on where the Chargers rank against the run. But also, where do the Chargers rank against coverage of opposing tight ends? It's not good. It's toward the bottom. And you just you just feel that Bill Belichick would just want to put you know twist the knife a little bit by making this all of a sudden an offense that runs heavily through the air by giving a heavy dose of hunter henry just to say ah gotcha gotcha a little bit could totally see bill belichick implementing that type of plan but damian harris last year uh against the against this team uh, against this chargers team i think ran for just over 80 yards um he had a nice day. Cam Newton, obviously, rushing had a nice day. He didn't have to do much. He only completed 12 passes last year. So the rushing attack was there one year ago against this New England team. I'll get into Gunnar Olszewski later in the show uh, <laughs> and, all, and all the great <laughs> memories that, that that created. But would you just break this down as a whole? Jacoby Myers is coming into his own. Hunter Henry, I think, is we're going to de- see a heavy dose of. And yes, of course, the rushing game. Say what you will about what New England did against the Jets, but screw it, man. Give me a 60-year-old M or however old Emmett Smith is right now, but give me Emmett Smith now, today. You get people opening up holes in front of him, he's going to be able to run on this Chargers defense from what we've seen. So it's not going to be fixed. It's not going to totally go from being the worst to the best, but can you make adjustments? Can you fix it? So one of the big, big things, big, big, big things coming for the Chargers this week is we mentioned we're going to get healthy. Justin Jones is coming back. Zero Adderley is coming back. Drew Tranquil's coming back. Uh... He'll be there. You got three guys in my, I think three guys that are going to be there. And all three of them, I think, are going to be additions and very, very big in terms of fixing how poor our defense was in terms of rush defense and Justin Jones specifically up the middle. Uh, we'll see. You know, I think I, as dreadful as the rushing defense has been for this Chargers team, we've also gone up against like the elite rushing teams in the NFL. So I, I, I know people are concerned and I know people are afraid, but let's give them. Some people aren't. <laughs> There are the contingent people that are not afraid at all. No, no. So in terms of like what I think our defense needs to do, 
to stop their offense. So Mac Jones is kind of known to have, I mean, he's a rookie. And so he'll throw rookie throws sometimes. Chargy to capitalize on that. I think he has six interceptions so far this season. He doesn't have a strongest arm. So I don't think we necessarily have to worry about the deep ball as much as we would other quarterbacks. But they typically run a lot of two tight end sets, either one receiver or two receiver, two tight end sets. Derwin James is going to be having a big day. I think Derwin James is going to have a big day. I think Kaiser White and Drew Tranquil, I think all of them being able to kind of suffocate the linebacker, like the linebacking core slash safety is being able to suffocate the tight ends, I think is going to be, in my opinion, kind of the difference maker of this game. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about like the deep shots unless we pull it into Rattley and give up a 75 yard touchdown to a tight end without trying to wrap up. Uh, hopefully that is fixed, but again, it's a bill Belichick led offense. They're going to at least try to be efficient, try not to make mistakes. Although again, it is Mac Jones. And I believe I don't necessarily remember. I don't know if I have the teams, but I believe New England's only three wins this year have all gone up against rookie quarterbacks. So, yes, they they have won three games. Who they've beat? Is that they beat Zach Wilson. I mean, like, I think all three of their wins have been against worse opponents than we've played than we've faced. Dan, I I wouldn't poo poo. Mac Jones as much. Everything you said is absolutely I'm, true. No, 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 I can, no, no, no. I'm not. No, no, I, I, I know you're not. I know you're not. And everything that you said right now is absolutely true. That was the same argument that I was talking about for the Baltimore Ravens when we were looking at who were their previous three opponents before they just came in and beat the brakes off of us. It wasn't anything that was too impressive, but you still look at it. You look at the Tampa Bay game, even a losing effort. New England played them extremely tough. Because obviously Belichick was very familiar with Brady, he knew how to scheme against him defensively. That was one of their better games and held New or held Tampa Bay to one of its lowest scoring games of the season. But let's just focus on Mac Jones because obviously this is this is the guy that if you're the Chargers defense, you want to make this game about him and force him to to basically beat you because mm-hmm. we all know that the run game and what that's about. You need to try to take that away in some certain capacity. But here's what Mac Jones has been doing over the over the this season so far. He's first out of out of the rookie quarterbacks. And honestly, when compared to it, it's not even close. It's a landslide for this. But he's first in pass yards, first in passing TD, first in completions, in completion percentage, in touchdown percentage, in interceptions, in QBR and on target percentage. You get where I'm going with it. There's a plethora of stats where he's first. But let's focus on this. The last four games, Dan. He's completed 73.2% of his, uh, of his passes, just over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, and a 105.8 quarterback rating. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Not too bad. But, he's, look, my, my emphasis is, is that he's getting better. Yeah. Okay, yes, I'll give you that. But he's also got up against teams like the Jets, right. like... The Houston Texans, right? Like yep. the Miami Dolphins, who I want to say okay, combined, those three teams I think have three wins. Yes, yes. I, I, Dan, I totally, I totally get that, man. I totally get that. So I'm, I'm just saying, doesn't, I, I, doesn't everything that you're seeing saying right now, doesn't that just sound like the traditional game that's ripe for the Chargers to lose? Yes. Chargers should, oh, yes, this should be a easy victory. For the Chargers, should I'm not saying it will be should, but it should be, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. I mean, like if you get into like the specifics, right? Like the Chargers have a lot of playmakers on defense now that are now healthy. They're going to be able to kind of go up against like Chris Harris is now getting healthy. You got Nazir Adderley back. Derwin James and Joy Bosa are still in the game now, which is like incredible to see that in Week Eight. Uh, and folks have been playing pretty well. I mean, even. Like Asante Samuel Jr. has had a pretty good season for a rookie. I mean, I think he, I forget exactly the statistic, but I want to say he's allowed the the fewest uh, completion percentage of any Chargers secondary player. I think he's only given up like 59% completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks, which like is better than Derwin James, Michael Davis, Chris Harris, Cesar Adderley. 
he's doing pretty darn good. Now, is he missing some tackles? Yes. I'm hoping Brandon Stanley goes to his team and says, look, guys, like we need to rattle Mac Jones. I don't care how we do it. We need to pressure him. If we like this isn't this isn't Lamar Jackson. This isn't one of those quarterbacks where I'm worried about him breaking containment and all of a sudden ripping off 20 yards. Like I want to see them pin their ears back. And this should be like a Brandon Staley defense where we're like, whoo, that was fun. If we don't see that, I am very nervous about this game. If you end up, I mean, obviously the Chargers felt the loss of Nasir Adderley and Drew Tranquil against the Ravens mm-hmm. game. You should have Nasir Adderley back. Drew Tranquil has been limited in practice. Fingers crossed that he he gets there. Justin Jones, I still think that they officially need to declare him healthy off the the IR for him to come back. That I don't think that announcement has officially been made yet, but all indications have been good. And then Kenneth Murray being the lone setback has still been practicing on the side. He's still a little bit, uh, you know, probably a couple more weeks away from returning. So in general, this has been one of the healthier moments of the Chargers have had this season. And yes, getting Justin Jones back to hopefully do something to improve this run defense, I still believe that out of, if you think of the big three that the Chargers have in the middle and Tillery and Joseph and Jones, he is the best as far as stopping the run. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes, even even somewhat better than Linval Joseph could be. And they need him. They need him because the drop-off has been very noticeable. Uh, So... How are you going to do this? How are you going to take the run away so much that you're going to put the ball in Mac Jones' hands? Well, if Drew Tranquil does come back, give me some of those beautifully disguised blitzes where Drew Tranquil yes, was please. just flying in from the middle of the field. Give me Derwin James coming off the uh, uh, coming off the edge. Because we saw from last week, Joey Bosa is being triple teamed. Because nobody, no opposing offense... No opposing offense is scared of who the Chargers have on the other side. And Chenna Nuosu, he ended up getting his first sack against Baltimore, but it's just like, hey, okay, that's great. It's about time. Uh, you know, Kyler Fackrell has had his moments in the game. Haven't seen as much as you'd like to see, even in situational pass rushing situation from Chris, Chris Rump. So where are you going to disguise these type of blitzes to get this rookie quarterback off the snide and make him make mistakes? That's the biggest question. So, yeah, it's more than just stopping the run and simply forcing Mac Jones to beat you. But how are you going to do it? Again, I, I think that. it's a matter of getting pressure. I think I think for me, it's a matter of getting pressure and causing turnovers like this. As much as the Patriots offense and Mac Jones has been doing pretty good, but like they also turned the ball over. Like I think they're ranked 28th in fumbles lost as a team. I think they're ranked 24th in terms of turnovers. I think they've given up 11 turnovers as a team and five fumbles they have lost. Like that's not good. And the Chargers, to their credit, like our defense is ranked eighth in turnovers caused. So like we have to be able to capitalize on things like that. Now, what concerns me. We talked about it. Like their rushing offense scares me. But again, we're getting healthier now. So we'll see. And also, like, they score pretty darn well. Like they score, I think they're fifth in scoring percentage per drive, which I will take that any day of the week. Um, and I I apologize. I misspoke earlier when I said we were eighth in turnovers gotten. That's not true. The Patriots are eighth in turnovers on defense. So um we like our defense I think we're plus three i believe as a team we have to continue that trend we have to force turnovers they give the ball away we have to be able to continue that take it away keep it from them give it back to our offense because i'll take our offense over theirs 10 out of 10 times and as we kind of flip this going from the going looking at the chargers offense versus the patriots defense like i don't know jake I know I'm the optimist, like I get it. But if you look at the secondary for these Patriots, like I think we're going to have a field day. I think between Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and one of the tight ends, I think you're going to see two of those three go off in this game. The Patriots are thin on secondary. I don't really see much. And if we can somehow, somehow, not let Matt Judon beat us, 
who's like a one-man wrecking crew at this point. If we can contain him, I feel pretty darn good about our offense. Almost every position except for, as of today, Austin Eckler was on the injury report. So in theory, he may not play, but he's been available all throughout the bye week. So I'm not quite sure. Uh, But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm pretty bullish on our offense versus our defense. Let's do some housekeeping items here right before we jump into this, because obviously this, when you watch the offensive performance against the, 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 the Chargers are coming off of having against the Baltimore Ravens, you're expecting a hell of a lot better. And especially from what the coach said, Brandon Staley talking about how aggressive they have to be on first and second down. But before we get into that, Dan, we have a couple of announcements that we have to actually make sure that we get out on this podcast, starting with uh, very good sponsors of our Charger Bolt family. Dan, I believe you have all the details as far as special event that they have coming up. Yes, Charger Bolt family. They have an amazing, amazing community that they are on Facebook as well as on Twitter as well. Charger Bolt family. Check them out. Tell them Charger Leaf sent you. Uh, They have, Jake, they have a Justin Herbert signing coming up in December. For folks who are looking to get any type of memorabilia, hats, jerseys, cards, you name it, uh, helmets, they have them all. If you have your own, you can send it in. If you want one, they will also provide one to you if you'd like. You can get a Justin Herbert signed memorabilia item. Check them out. Charger Bolt family. They do all kinds of giveaways. They're also at uh, Thunder Alley doing tailgates, so you can see them there. Uh, Great, great group. Check out Charger Bolt family. They have an awesome signing coming up. I think they just did Joshua Kelly. And they are now going to be having Justin Herbert. I believe it's December 15th. Make sure you guys get your stuff in early because they are going to have a backlog because he is one hot commodity and Charger fans everywhere trying to get this. So check him out. Chargeable family on Facebook as well as on Instagram and Twitter. Now talking, now getting back to talking about the Chargers offense against this Patriots defense. You go back a year ago because I think that there's going to be some, there's, very similar scheme that Bill Belichick is going to run here because what did the Ravens do? We heard from Justin Herbert afterwards that they disguised a lot of things. There was, you know, things that we hadn't seen from other opposing defenses all year that just really got us off. uh, And we just, you know, couldn't get a rhythm going. It really confused us. So what did the Patriots do last year? They ran that old, you know, zero blitz package and, we know what happens when you blitz Justin Herbert a majority of the time. Majority of the time, he does pretty well. He ran 34 stunts in that game, Dan. You remember that? 34 stunts. Brutal. Said, screw the blitz. I'm just going to confuse this kid, and this is how I'm going to get to him. And it disrupted Justin Herbert, had a porous day, and the Patriots kicked our ass. So I think that's exactly what they're going to try to do here in this game. As you mentioned, Matt Judon, who is rising up the chart as far as one of the best pass rushers that's in the league right now. I think he's sixth on the chart with uh, 20 combined quarterback hits, and he's got 29 quarterback disruptions. Okay, so it's like six and a half a- sacks already. Like it's insane. No, he's, well, he's six. Of, yeah, is, is that what it is? It's six and a half sacks that he's got. Yep. So, you know, if, I mean, if I'm Belichick, I'm not even going to put him on Rashawn Slater's side. I'm just going <laughs> to creep him right over to the right side and put him on uh-huh. Storm in order to just basically plop there and you're going to be there the entirety of the game. Uh, Adrian Phillips, believe it or not, familiar face. He's, this, this man has not just become a special teams commodity any longer. Believe it or not, he's allowing a passer rating of only 37.2 when he's targeted. 37.2. So he's coming into the zone. He's growing in this defense. He's been an integral part. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna come with a lot of different pieces. So what do I want to see offensively for the Chargers? Yes, the sudden emergence of Austin Eckler on the injury report does give me some concern, especially from a fantasy perspective because I have him. But there are some dramatic things that I want to see from this offense moving forward. We all know the key players. We all know who the, the focal point is and how many different ways this offense can carve an opposing defense up. But what do I want to see? I want to see 
plays being called that are more aggressive on first and second down. I understand this whole philosophy of Brandon Staley, you know, being able to control the clock, matriculate down the field. I think Justin Herbert so far has evolved into a, a, a smarter thinking quarterback in that type of a system and realizes that he doesn't have to play hero ball and chuck the ball 60 times down the field and have every shot be a home run. But at the same time, you need to be aggressive with the weapons that you have and you need to be able to, you could still sustain drives this way, but if it ends up with you putting seven in the end zone, then do it. You cannot be this team that, to their credit, has had three comeback victories in the fourth quarter uh, so far this season. But you can't rely strictly on your offense to come in and bail you out the way you did against the Cleveland Browns in the fourth quarter. You can't be that team that's going to be, okay, we're going to play shootout ball and you know, eventually we'll be there in the end and we'll come away with a W. That cannot be it. If you really want to help this defense out, give yourself a 14-point or a 21-point lead that can then have Ronaldo Hill be aggressive and send a couple other blitzers when you have a little bit of a cushion to play with as far as points goes. So, yes, the offense needs to be more aggressive on first and second down try to get Justin Herbert out of these third and long situations to where he doesn't have to make the ridiculous throws that he does on third down and somehow complete it. And as much as I love fourth and Staley, and as much (laughs) as that has worked this season, it doesn't mean I like seeing it all the time. (laughs) Ask my cardiologist. I don't like seeing it all the time. Uh, I only (laughs) like seeing it when it works. So Joe Lombardi, I hope, and Brandon Staley, I hope, have gone back to the drawing board, spent the bye week, really understanding the scheme that they have, how to better utilize their players, and can somehow come out of this gate firing on all cylinders and be a much more better rhythm for the fact that you've had two weeks now to scheme against this New England defense. And and, and look, like it's a well-coached team, and that's one of the biggest advantages that the Patriots have is they're always ready to play. But, like, Jake, they got, like, Sean Wade, for example. Like, remember him? He was kind of like one of those guys with the beginning of of last season in college. He's like, oh, he might be a first-round pick. And then he just plummeted. Like, he may potentially have, like, his first start in the NFL this weekend, depending on injuries and how they go. Now, granted, the Patriots injury list is, like, a mile long. You can never actually trust it. Never trust it. it. Absolutely not. But, Everybody's limited. Someone with a broken leg is on the injury report. No, he's limited. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, seriously, like they, they don't have their secondary is not great right now. So like I'm picking on that. And, and I I don't know. There really isn't like look, like they still have Kyle Van Noy. Like that he's good. Like they still got Dante Hightower, who is a name, but like Spring it on with 40 to 70% off almost everything at Gap Factory and GapFactory.com. Matching styles for the family are on sale too. Shop it all through April 12th. This team is, I don't think it's as good as people are saying they are. Like, I, I just and, don't. And I, and I understand your reasoning is why, Dan. I get it. I get it. If, if this is not can, a team that scares me. Be, if, okay. See, okay, so you're you're one of the ones that's that's been chirping on Twitter. No, you're the no, one of the no, ones. No, 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 no. Don't put me in that bucket. I I was not talking about like the rush defense. Every team's rush offense scares me, but like the things that beat the Chargers, and I know we just got our ass kicked by them last year. But like this team, again, this team, stay with me, is different. This team, I don't see us getting beat by teams who don't have like explosive offenses. I just don't see it. Like Ravens have a juggernaut at quarterback. Like the Cowboys have a juggernaut offense. The Patriots. I don't know. Call me a Homer. I think we're going to win this game. I'm not that. As I say that, it makes me sound like I'm way more bullish than I probably should be. And that's probably like, <sighs> Dang it. I, I'm sorry. Don't do not let your <laughs> optimism 
Uh, better you. I know that you are naturally optimistic at heart, but what's don't gonna, let okay. it get the best of you, Dan. Give me okay. Give me. We've talked about both offense and defense versus each other, Jake. Give me like the recipe for success for the Patriots to beat the Chargers. Like I think there are several paths for the Chargers to win this game. There is several paths for the Chargers, but what is the path game? for 100%. the Patriots to win? Well, there's a hey. Look, there's a there's two in my book. If you can't stop two. the run, the, the Patriots are going to beat you. That's a given. Okay, if you one. also can't pressure a rookie quarterback, I don't care who it is. But if you're forcing your DBs to cover these wide receivers for six seconds, Jacoby Myers or not, yeah. Come on, yeah. man. So they, like, so there's the keys of the game. So if we can get pressure and somehow contain. Their rush offense, ball game, right? There and there is a there is a third piece here that was obviously a big part of the twenty twenty matchup between Say the two of them, and I'll get to that in a second. But Dan, just so you know, as confident as you are right now, I believe that these are the uh, the updated odds for the game. But I, I believe that the Chargers are a five point favorite going into this game. I could be wrong. I'm trying to find the most updated lines. This was as I think of yeah, uh, I think this was as of yesterday. It was a five point they were a five point favorite. I'm not sure if anything has happened. But are you confident with that line? For As of right now, I'm looking on ESPN. It looks like they have a four and a half point spread. Okay, so four yeah. and a half. Yeah, so four I'm, and taking a half. It. I'm taking the over. Taking the over. Yep. And the over under is 49. What would you take there? Ooh. Uh under. Under. All right. So but not basically because it's, it's gonna be a one-sided, a one-sided blowout by the Chargers, pretty much. <laughs> I did not say what that. The words of... <laughs> no, I'm I think it's gonna be like a I don't want to spoil it, but I think it's gonna be like something in the teens versus something higher. All right. Well, fair enough. Well, speaking of ma- <laughs> speaking of making bets, want to remind everybody that today the show is being brought to you by my bookie. You can get paid Friday. Wake up Saturday and throw down. If you guys are UFC fans out there, UFC two sixty seven. Hell yeah, I am. <laughs> UFC two sixty seven is this weekend. My bookie is also giving users one hundred dollars risk free wager on the light heavyweight championship fight between Jan Blahovitz and Glover to share us. So don't wait. Head to mybookie.ag now and use the promo code LAFB20. That is LAFB20. It's a lock. Get your season started with a win. Thank me later. Much later. Bet bet anything, anytime, (laughs) anywhere with mybookie. All right, Jake. Before we get into the bold and game predictions, we have a voicemail on the Chargers Unleashed hotline. And again, it's been pretty quiet on the Western front because, you know, we haven't had football to watch except other people's teams, which is nice. Uh, By the way, like last week, Jake, we saw like the Ravens lose. We saw the Broncos lose again. Saw the Chiefs lose. Like it's it's a pretty good week. Eagles lost. Uh, That was the one that we wish they would have. That was the one. Yeah, that was the one. But otherwise, like it was a Sunday. I would say it was a pretty successful when I don't have to check myself into my cardiologist or call my heart doctor at the end of a Sunday, <laughs> to me, Pace it's maker. been good. It's been a nice, relaxing Sunday. I would good. like that trend to continue this weekend. All right. Well, so we have one voicemail from someone who called in just to kind of give us their overall take on how they feel about the team so far. For folks who have not yet called in or are looking to in the future, Chargers Unleash Hotline. Leave us your voicemail, your reactions, your takes. Jake will listen to it live on the fly and get your give you his instant reactions. Call us 323-374-5651. Be on an upcoming episode. Jake, without further ado, let's hear from the 909 area code and hmm. hear what they have to say about these chargers. All right. What's going on, fellas? My name is Diamond. I'm the bottom of Bill. Um Driver from this year. I love the content you guys put out there. I love you guys' as shit. You guys uh, give me some good listening, man. I appreciate you guys. Um, I just wanted to call them, man. First time caller. Wanted to, you know, 
bring in some optimism. You know, when we were four and two on the stretch we had, that's that's a win. That's a big win. Uh, playoffs, you know, are still definitely in reach. Uh, we got a schedule that's kind of in our favor, but you know, it's a long season. Some teams can get hot here and there, but you know, I just really hope we regroup and get some bodies back. I love what Brad, what Brandon Stanley is doing for the team. Uh, they're definitely buying into what he believes and they're believing, uh, in each other. And that, that's what you need. I mean, you have one bad game. The Ravens, you can't get mad at that. Uh, they are a dominant team all, all three phases. They've been, they've been knocking at the doorstep. Uh, but hey, we gotta, we gotta get smacked and mouth and bounce back. The NFL, they're all big boys. They gotta come out swinging. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys, what's your guys' take on Lombardi's offense so far? Uh, how, how do you guys feel about him not targeting Allen so much? I don't know if that's by design or if that's just Herbert not going through his read. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And also the defense. I mean, you've been kind of bad on the run, but we've been getting stops when we need. So what do you guys think, man? I look forward to hearing from you guys. Let me see this about uh, – let me start off with that as far as the – Criticisms on Joe Lombardi, which I 100% understand both sides of the spectrum. Some some of everybody, a handful of people have gone way too far with it. Like one game and you're already ready to protest. Or it's like, well, what happened in the week one against Washington? No, screw that, okay? Look, <clears throat> the Chargers got outcoached in all facets of the game against the Baltimore Ravens. Every single facet. It happens. Does anybody remember when Tom Brady was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in like the first half of last year and <laughs> remembering the stretch of losses that they had to endure? They were until, saying they were going to make the playoffs. Right. Until Bruce Arians finally just hit fuck it and said, okay, Tom, I get it now. Do your thing that you thrive in. And pretty much they haven't looked back since. Now, look, let's all remember as much as we love Justin Herbert as amazing of a talent as he is and yes the man has still gone through recycled coaches over the last four years since his days at Oregon he's gonna have some bumps in the road okay we're all gonna have these type of games and if you think about it from a standpoint as to say okay you know you could be the group of people that thinks that it's doomsday and that everything is just going to implode and that the Chargers will not make any adjustments and this, that, and the other, and there's a blueprint to beat us now and blah, blah, blah. Or you could put some confidence in your new head coach. Again, this is not an Anthony Lynn-led team. This is not a Mike McCoy-led team. This is not a North Turner-led team. I am one to believe that what I have seen in the first six weeks of the season, that Brandon Staley will look at the film and make some adjustments. Let's not forget, there were a lot of guys missing from last week, especially defensively. Okay? I'm so proud give, of you. Give Brandon Staley to, again, Dan, this, this goes into my conspiracy theory that when we did the show <laughs> last week on Wednesday instead of the instant reaction Monday, you probably would have gotten a much different Jake Hefner reaction. I am not used to this. Long story short, does... Joe Lombardi deserves some criticism. Yes, he does. Because there were definitely some confusing series that the Chargers were doing uh, throughout that game. A lot. It wasn't just one here or there. There was a lot of confusion as far as the plays that were being called, what was being executed. Obviously, when Justin Herbert would be going out to make a play, he wasn't getting any help because his receivers would be dropping the ball. But regardless of that, there are still adjustments here, guys. And stop referencing everything from Joe Lombardi and just tying him to Detroit. Because it's not like he was in Detroit last year and they had their worst offensive season. That was a minute ago. Okay? That was a minute ago. And since then, he's been with the Saints. Since then, he went on to have a, a pretty nice tenure with the Saints and did pretty damn well there with one of the best that's ever played. So, yes, are there going to be some bumps in the road? Of course. It's not going to be flawless. Get over it. It's still an adjustment period for everyone. Brandon Staley, Joe Lombardi, Justin Herbert, coaches and players alike. You're going to have this bad game. And I guarantee you, Dan, 
we're going to be talking about this same question here in a couple of weeks. Maybe next week. Maybe two weeks from now. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Jake, Give I, it time. I, gotta, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, like seeing this side of you just gives me all like the warm and fuzzies inside. I'm not like hearing you say about like, oh, you, this is a different team. This isn't the Anthony Lynn led team and how, I mean. Then, quick question. If someone <laughs> was to ask me right now, <laughs> if the play is second and 15, yeah. would I rather have more, would, who would I rather have? as my coach and offensive coordinator, or, or what would what would I rather have my offensive scheme be on a second and 15 play? Would I rather have Brandon Staley and Joe Lombardi scheme, or would I rather have Anthony Lynn's scheme on a second and 15? <laughs> it's not even close, because I could already tell you what Anthony Lynn would run on a second and 15. It'd be a draw play up draw the middle, middle and probably gain <laughs> negative three yards. So get out of town on that. Yeah, it's already immensely better than what it is last year. You're sitting at four and two, and yes, the second half of this schedule is very beneficial to you. So start off on the right, make your adjustments after the bye week, and let's go. So I'm going to get on the high horse for two seconds, and then I'll hop off so we can get onto our bold game predictions here, Jake. The Chargers just went four and two against that gauntlet of a schedule. And say what you will about how porous our rush defense was and questionable play calling was and special teams was atrocious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Chargers went four and two, okay? Now, sure, are there things that they can improve? The aforementioned special teams, which we'll get into in a second before we get to the game predictions, because I know you got to talk about your boy. The Chargers went four and two against that group. Do you think they're going to do better or worse against a worse slated schedule? Like the teams they're going up against are not as good as the ones they went up against. So, like, give it some of them are. Give it time. Okay, a couple. But there's also some not there's some very not good teams coming up that we should be able to blow the doors off of, in theory. So Let's. I think now team's healthy off a of bye. They have some time to kind of assess their team. They brought in some new guys for special teams. Dustin Hopkins, Andre Roberts. So special teams is, it could be an advantage. We don't know. We honestly have no idea. Like, I don't think it could be worse. But let's just give the team, like, let's see how they do. Let's wait till the end of the fourth quarter before we start calling for a new offensive coordinator, which I've seen, which is ridiculous. <laughs> well put, Dan. All right, let's move to that aforementioned special teams because special teams was a big part in the last matchup between the New England Patriots and the Chargers in 2020. Uh, so much so to the point where, you know, th this would be the perfect time, Dan, if we had that capability where it's like the sound thing and, you know, like flashback to last year on the pod and talk about, OK, who's going to be the, the player of the game from the New England Patriots? And literally, given who their receivers were last year, I literally said that Gunnar Olszewski will probably had a, a career day. See, I can't even still pronounce his name right. Gunnar Olszewski and have a career day in returns and touchdowns and receiving. And what happened? Well, he was the New England Patriots leading receiver, had a touchdown. And uh, did some I hated you were right. On. I hated you were right about that. <laughs> hated oh my it. God. Ah. I was loving it. And, <laughs> and he did some pretty good damage on special teams as well. So if we're talking about control of the field, uh, where the Chargers have obviously had a huge problem with that throughout the season probably going back the last several years as a matter of fact what can you do to stop it what can you do to stop it um you know luckily for them it there hasn't been a huge return it hasn't been a thing that has you know been as big of a factor as far as the return game for the opponents i'm not talking about themselves because or even us. like we haven't had a muff punt we haven't had anything right like, it hasn't happened topic. yet knocking on wood as far as how you can help yourself, well, that's simple. The Chargers 
made an adjustment, a, adjustment to that this week. Obviously, sending K.J. Hill to the practice squad, signing Andre Roberts. And hopefully you can get yourself in a position to where Justin Herbert doesn't have to be driving 85 yards to put points on the board. So hopefully you would expect that to be better. As far as Dustin Hopkins goes, bravo to Brandon Staley for the day before this was said, because obviously coaches are not going to publicly throw their players under the bus. (laughs) But he was talking about how much confidence he had in Tristan Vizcaino. And literally the next day, Tristan Vizcaino has been waived. He has since then, of course, been signed to the practice squad. And the Chargers bring in veteran Dustin Hopkins. How is Dustin Hopkins going to look? I have no idea. Everybody I, everybody who I saw from the Washington football team standpoint was apparently very happy to get him out of there because they were all hung up on what he did in 2020. 2020, statistically for him, was not a good season. So far, what he has done in 2021, it hasn't been a lot, but it's been better. And as Fernando Ramirez said to us on Monday, Dan, sometimes kickers just need a change of scenery yeah. to get something right. So I felt that the one telling stat was, and this was from Joe Reedy of the Associated Press, whenever the Chargers attempt their next PAT, Dustin Hopkins will become the 11th Chargers kicker since yeah. 2017. 11! What? <laughs> I mean, that's that's just that's more. That's almost three a year. That is a microchasm in a simple sentence to tell you how long the Chargers have been looking for consistency at kicker. You had a little bit of it with Mike Badgley, but still, he had his issues, and something had to change. Can you give me a kicker that can last more than two years at least on this team? And give me some type of consistency. Give me something to where he can drill a 50-yard field goal under pressure. Give me something to where we're not missing five PATs in the first half of the season. Give me something like that. Give me a kicking foundation to build on to where Chargers fans don't have to be holding their collective breaths whenever a PAT or a field goal needs to be made. Is it sad, Jake, that... The ba- like the the baseline we have for like, do we have a good kicker? It's virtually like, anybody. It's like can we can we, can we get through yeah. a game? Who did the Chargers sign? Points? Who did the Chargers sign? Oh, okay, perfect. Well, she's probably <laughs> better than who we had before. <laughs> Who's that guy? Uh, we don't know. You know, he used to play uh, college soccer, but I think he'll be a good. <laughs> Fine, sign him. He's gonna be great. Can he kick an extra point? Great. Okay. Cool. No, he's got um, a baseball background, but he knows how to, you know, connect mine with the ball. Perfect. He used to play golf in high school. <laughs> Can he make contact with the ball? Oh, yes. Okay, so Jake. Has he done it with a flat? What? No. <laughs> Is there a rule that you have to kick an extra point with your leg? Is that the rule book? I mean. It, no, like seriously. That's, that's, well, that is kind of the, uh, that's kind of the essence there, Dan. <laughs> Just. I'm trying I mean, to anything else, it's probably not traveling that far. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, Jake. Moment of truth. Here we go. Bowl prediction. Final score prediction. Go. Oh, yeah, see, I... What I've done now is I've pinned myself into a corner because I went on that nice rant about expecting adjustments from Brandon Staley and Joe Bavari to hopefully make some improvements. Yep. Uh, yes. I'm not going to be naive and thinking that the New England Patriots are all of a sudden not going to be able to run on the Chargers because they will. Will they have over 100 yards rushing? Yes, they will. I don't know by who. It could be a running back by committee. Damian Harris most likely will be leading the way on that. Can the Chargers get pressure on Mac Jones? Can they confuse him a little bit? I think that they can. I think that they can. Again, when you've talked about the teams that he has beaten and looked good against, you can definitely force him into making some mistakes. So defensively, what do I want to see? Show me something that your defense can force an opposing offense to be looking at third and eight instead of third and two. That'd be nice. Show me something like that that says, damn. We know 
what they're going to be running the entire time, and we can't do a damn thing to stop it. Show me something. Show me improvements. And I will give ben- Brandon Staley the benefit of the doubt because we haven't seen him off of a bye yet that I'm not going to be so negative. And I'm going to think positively about this coming Let's off go. of a bye. And saying that, is he going to write the ship completely? No. So don't expect a flawless performance from either him or, or Joe Lombardi. So, but is it good enough to make adjustments to get a win and get back on the right track? Yes. Yes, I say so. So offensive side of the ball, again, as I've been saying, get more aggressive. Is Austin Eckler going to play? God, I hope so. I'm not sure because you definitely need him. Even Austin Eckler was talking about earlier this week that you need it. They're looking for another guy to step up in the running back stable that they need. And definitely that is true. And especially if for whatever reason, knock on wood, that Austin Eckler will not be out there on Sunday, you're definitely going to need someone to step up. So aggressiveness, first and second downs. Get points on the board. Do not fall behind to this New England Patriots team. And for the love of God, special teams, special teams, special teams. So with that, I know that was an elongated answer. That's normally how I do it. But Dan, as you ask, bold prediction. I'll be nice. Go first. The Chargers will not miss a field goal in Shut this game. And that is bold of enough of prediction to say it. Shut up. And that is a that's a field goal and PAT included. Wow. They will not miss one. Yes, it is outrageous enough. For that, probably that not is to happen. scorching <laughs> hot take right there. <laughs> Final score prediction for you. Chargers. You call the Chargers victory for like five weeks in a row right now. Chargers. Chargers 27. New England Patriots 23. Whoa, bait and switch. You got the Patriots losing this game. Okay, let's go. Um, Bold prediction. Chargers force three turnovers and have three touchdown passes. Just three on both sides. And then final score, Chargers 27, Patriots 13. And the Chargers end up five and two in the division. So, Jake, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. But we got something hot coming tomorrow that I cannot wait. So, folks, if you are tuning in, be sure to check back with us. Make sure you have subscribed to us on YouTube, and be ready at five o'clock Pacific or something that's going to be going live, and you're not going to want to miss it. And in the meantime, Jake, I don't know if people saw it. I know you and I saw it because we posted about it. There is a t-shirt giveaway going on right now. We, we talked about the fourth and Staley going on a bit ago, and we coined it, put it on a shirt. LEFB made it, and now we are selling it, but we're actually giving one away. All you got to do, subscribe to us. We have it on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, but find us, follow us, and give proof that you have shown or that you have subscribed to us and you are entered in for the chance to win one of those shirts color and size of your choice and we can have some fun how many fourth and staley's do you think we're going to see this week jake i don't think we're going to see okay look if things go the way as planned hopefully you shouldn't see at least more than one or two so i'll put the line at two and I'll be nice enough to say under. Okay. All right. Uh, well, last thing, last update. You know, we had a bunch of household items to get through. We are actually going to be doing a super cool event. We'll talk more yeah, about right. it in the coming weeks. But we've actually got a collaboration with LAFB and Golden Road Brewing. And special guest, friend of the show, the director, is actually going mm-hmm. to be here for this event as well. Um, essentially, we've got a party bus event, Jake. Folks will be able to come to Golden Road. We will have a party bus that takes you from Golden Road to and from Sofa. Back to Golden Road. Drinks at Golden Road. Free parking at Golden Road. I believe it's 65 bucks per person. Shuttle leaves at 3 for the Week 11 game. 
prime time against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, that's going to be that's November 21st. We'll be talking about it more in the coming weeks, but get ready, get planned. If you're interested, go to LAFB.com. You'll see the tickets for sale there. I think there's only 25 spots available. So I'm not sure how many are left, to be honest, but get them while you still can. And we can all have some fun. Hang out at the Brewing House of Golden Road. And then from there, we'll all take a fun shuttle over to tailgate, go to the Steelers game, come back. Yours truly will be there. I believe Jake is trying to get there too. Ryan will be there, founder yes. of LAFB. A bunch of folks are trying to have some fun here. Cool event. Hope to see you there. Whew, Jake, that was a lot. That was uh, mouthful. Anything, anything else we want to tell the good people before we sign off until tomorrow for um, what? Special guest? Can we say special that? Special guest. Teaser. Okay. But, <laughs> It's just nice to get back to football. When your team is on a bye week, and especially as sour of a way to go into the bye week as that was, that two weeks feels like an eternity. Mm -hmm. So get me back to football. I don't want to have to make a cardiologist appointment. (laughs) And when we come here next Monday, I would hope that we would be talking about the Chargers and a W. Yes, please. For Jake Hefner, you can find him at Jake T. Hefner on Twitter. You can find myself at Chargers Homer. Again, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you can get us, as well as anywhere you get your podcast. Uh, for LAFB, this is Chargers Unleashed. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow for our next episode of Chargers Unleashed. Talk soon. Cheers. We can't go back. We can't-